Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order uh, Monday, August the 5th at 7.02 p.m. I uh, certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening. Uh, if we could just take a moment of silent meditation, and I would ask if you would consider uh, acknowledging the passing of Attorney Julius S. Chambers, former Chancellor of NCCU. Thank you. Thank you. That's Councilman Brown. If you leave us in the pledge. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, if you would call the roll, please. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Katati. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. We have a couple of uh, proclamations that we'd like to present this evening. The first, uh, in recognition of 2013 National Night Out, and I'll ask Chief Lopez and uh, whoever else you think is appropriate to join us. Uh, as many of you came in this evening, you probably uh, participated in the reception that was out in the uh, plaza. And of course, tomorrow night is uh, the night that we, as a community, celebrate the National Night Out. The proclamation speaks to the fact that on Tuesday, August the 6th, 2013, the City of Durham will observe the 30th Annual National Night Out, America's Night Out Against Crime, joining forces with more than 15,000 communities from all 50 United States, U.S. territories, Canadian cities, and military bases worldwide. Whereas National Night Out is a unique crime, drug, and violence prevention program that is sponsored annually by the National Association of Town Watch, and Target, and spearheaded locally by the City of Durham Police Department, whereas the observance is supported by the Public Safety Forces of North Carolina Central University Police, the Duke University Police, the Durham County Sheriff's Office, and the City of Durham Fire Departments, who are essential in helping to promote National Night Out and cooperative police community crime prevention efforts, whereas National Night Out is supported by the active participation and in-kind services of City of Durham departments who are committed to the city's mission to provide an excellent and sustainable quality of life, whereas Duke Energy is supporting the 30th annual National Night Out with a donation of $500 to the Durham Police Department's Police Explorers Program, whereas Durham's 2013 National Night Observance acknowledges the successes as well as the culmination of the North Carolina Child Responsive Unit Initiative, an award-winning partnership between the Durham Police Department and the Center for Child and Family Health that work to provide comprehensive follow-up services to families exposed to violence. Whereas the City of Durham debuted, debuted on the National Night Out Awards seen in 2006, and each year following has consistently ranked among the nation's top 15 participating National Night Out communities of comparable populations, and whereas in 2013, record numbers of Durham neighborhoods, businesses, faith groups, community and civic organizations observing National Night Out, signifying their year-round commitment to promote police community partnerships, crime, drug, and violence prevention, safety and neighborhood un unity. Now, therefore, I William Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do have our proclaim Tuesday, August the 6th, 2013, as National Night Out in Durham, and hereby call upon all citizens to join the Durham Police Department, its local law enforcement partners, supporting community agencies, the National Association of Town Watch and Target in supporting the 30th Annual National Night Out. And witness my hand, Corporate Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the fifth day of August, 2013. And we'll present this to Chief Lopez for any comments that he may have. Thank you very much. 
First of all, Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you and also the council for your support uh, with the police department. It makes it so much easier for us to work. I also need to thank our partners uh, that we work with uh, to include the uh, North Carolina Children's uh, Response Initiative, uh, the Duke Energy, and others who are, who are working with us. A safe community. You can tell a safe community primarily by the relationship it has with its police department. And if you look at the city of Durham, we are working very hard towards being a very safe community because the most important ingredient in law enforcement is really working here, and that is community. Our partnerships are very important to us, and they are instrumental in uh, keeping everyone safe and bringing the quality of life to the best possible measure that we could have. So I accept this on behalf of the community of, of Durham, and thank you very much for continuing to be our partners. And looking forward to celebrating this 30th birthday uh, tomorrow at, uh, throughout the community. Uh, there are quite a few sites, and I will attempt to make as many sites as I possibly can without breaking any speed laws. So uh, looking forward to seeing the community tomorrow. Thank you. And also, I'd also like to call up uh, NCI, North Carolina Children's Response Initiative. Chief Lopez, over the last nine years, under your leadership and in partnership with mental health clinicians from the Center for Child and Family Health, Durham police officers have served more than 2,500 families through the North Carolina Child Response Initiative. These families, all of whose lives were impacted by violent crime in Durham, received comprehensive crisis services, individualized case management, and trauma-informed assessments and treatment provided by licensed clinicians. The impact of this partnership has been difficult to measure, but is evident in the comments made by one young officer several years ago. Our team had just responded in the middle of the night to a homicide in which a young child lost his mother. Back at headquarters, waiting for investigators to interview the victim's relatives, this officer approached me. We could never do what you do, he said, but it is so important. In fact, our half, the mental health half of this partnership, would never function without individual officers recognizing children and families in need taking the time to share this information and assisting clinicians in locating and reaching out to these victims. So it is with both sadness and hope that I come before you this evening to mark what we hope will be only a pause in this partnership. We are sad that in this environment of sequestration and funding cuts, the North Carolina Child Response Initiative has lost its grant funding, preventing us from continuing this partnership at this time. At the same time, we are hopeful. Currently, we are seeking private funding to continue the program and will continue working in co collaboration with the police department to identify other private and or public funding. Perhaps one day the partnership could be both public and privately funded. In the meantime, we would like to recognize you and the dedicated officers of your department. So this says, presented to Chief Jose L. Lopez, Senior Chief of Police and the Durham Police Department in recognition of and appreciation for nine years of tireless dedication and service to Durham children and families as partners in the North Carolina Child Response Initiative. Thank you very much. <laughs> Th thank you very much. And, and your Ms. Bowman. Bowman. I, I got it right. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I have to say that uh, I'm very humbled by this because uh, this award really belongs to a lot of other people who are working behind the, uh, the lines there, uh, really caring about our children. Uh, taking a moment in their law enforcement capacity as police officers to realize uh, sometimes the damage that life causes to some of our young people that are out there. And uh, recognizing the fact that they do need to get the mental health and the, uh, at least to see how well they are in order so they can move forward in their lives and that eventually our society will become one of individuals who are mentally healthy in spite of what life has thrown at them. And I think that at that level, it's very important. So quite frankly, I, I appear to have a bunch of angels out there at the North Carolina Children's Response Initiative. They don't have any wings, so I'm hoping that this community can provide them with some wings so they continue to fly here in the city of Durham. Thank you, Thank you very much again. Thank you. Uh, the next proclamation is a continuing effort to identify organizations and that are helping as we go about the business of trying to reduce crime in our community. Uh, this uh, 
proclamation recognizes Crime Stoppers. And it's the board chairman, Pat Ellis. Oh, Pat, there. Available. Whereas Crime Stoppers is a worldwide network with programs in all 50 states, the Durham Crime Stoppers is a partnership between the community, law enforcement, and media outlets to solve crime contributing significantly to the quality of life in the city of Durham. Whereas Durham Crime Stoppers program was started in 1983, thereby instrumental in solving many felony and homicide cases, whereas Crime Stoppers pays cash rewards for information leading to the arrest of criminals while providing callers with confidentiality by maintaining the callers anonymity, whereas since its founding in 1983, Durham Crime Stoppers has maintained its status as a nonprofit organization with a civilian board of directors whose time and dedication helps to make Durham a safer place. Whereas from January 1, 2012 to now, Durham Crime Stoppers tips have resulted in over 230 cleared cases, 37 weapons recovered, 1,124 fugitives apprehended, and over $9,768 in narcotics recovered. Whereas Crime Stoppers has proven that citizen involvement is a powerful weapon in combating and solving crime, is an effective tool in enhancing the efforts of local law enforcement. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bell Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby extend best wishes to Durham Crime Stoppers in the celebration of their 30th anniversary with sincere congratulations for many more productive years. Witness my hand, the Corporate Silver City of Durham, North Carolina, this is the fifth day of August 2013, and I'd like again to present this to the board chair, Pat Ellis, for any Thank comments you might have. Pat. I'd like for our board to stand up, uh, as well as Brandon Parrott, our coordinator, law enforcement coordinator. I want to thank. <laughs> I want to thank Mayor Bell and uh, City Manager Bonfield and all the City Council members for all the support you've given us over the years, and uh, it's been a good working relationship, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'd like to recognize the Mayor Pro Tem for some comments. Good evening. Um, a few weeks ago, I was in uh, Old Five Points uh, on a tour, and I noticed um, some outstanding young people doing some volunteer work. Uh, I think they were doing a rain garden. And so how many of you are here, to, just one of you, yeah, they're on vacation, but Robin, uh, would you stand, come, come forth and just share a couple of, couple of minutes about the project. And Yes, that's good. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Robin McGee. I'm on the board of Youth Summer Service Week, and um, we get youth in our community. This summer we had 30 youth doing uh, great things in Durham. And um, in, we have two themes, one's Nourish, one's Home. And in our Home Week, we gave back $7,000 in just flat out work to the community. There's an elderly lady who has two wheelchair ramps on her house. It's uh, all the gardening work's been done, um, front porch and back porch stained, painted, power washed, gutters cleaned, uh, shrubs cut, bundled, put away. Um, and she is throwing a party on her back deck this summer, thanks to the youth. And they also did um, uh, $3,000 worth of work for Habitat for Humanity, assembling pickle barrels and making them into rain barrels. And um, Nourish Week, we had kids out doing gardening and cooking for the homeless. And we have a representative from a partnering neighborhood organization. We have a neighborhood representative. We have um, Spencer Bradford from Durham Congregations in Action, who's a, um, kind of our overseeing angel in this project. So we just want to thank the community, and it was great to have uh, you stop by. That was a really wonderful surprise. <laughs> well, could we recognize this young man? 
come up and introduce yourself. So Thomas represents about 30 uh, teenagers from Durham. <laughs> Just tell us who you are. Um, I'm Thomas Little, and I participated in Youth Summer Service Week this year, and it was a great thing, and I really appreciated it. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any comments by members of the council? Just comments. Uh, if not, I, I would ask the council's endorsement of the resolution that uh, we would be preparing for the family of Judas Chambers uh, be a part of the record, uh, having it done. So, yeah. Proper move and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. I recognize the city manager for. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening, everyone. Uh, no priority items. Thank you. Likewise, the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. In that case, we will proceed with the agenda. Uh, first item being the consent agenda. Uh, if a person chooses to remove an item from the consent agenda of the council, uh, we'll do that and discuss it later in the meeting. As usual, I'll just read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Uh, Item one is approval of city council minutes. Item two is audit services oversight committee reappointment. Item three is citizens advisory committee reappointments. Item four is homeless services advisory committee appointments. Item five is housing appeals board reappointment. Item six is human relations commission appointments. Item seven is workforce development board appointments. Item eight is Durham Open Space and Trails Commission appointments. Item nine is Durham Planning Commission appointment. Item 10 is the Durham Board of Adjustment appointment. Item 11 is the Durham Convention Center, Center Authority appointment. Item 12 is Recreation Advisory Commission appointments. Item 13 is the bid report for May 2013. Item 14 is the bid report for June 2013. Item 15 is a res resolution of intent to annex property owned by the city. Item 16 is training and related travel expenses performance audit dated May 2013. Item 18 is amendment one to the joint cooperation agreement with the County of Durham for Durham City County Home Consortium. Item 19 is City of Durham Employment and Training 2012-2014 grant project ordinance superseding project ordinance 14381 for federal grant. Item 20, a bids term contract for liquid ferric sulfate solution, 9,200 tons. Item 21 is proposed advanced acquisition for the future expansion of Lake Mickey, property of Ricky Dwayne Shepherd. Item 23 is fleet maintenance center roof and envelope renovations contract with Owen Roofing, Com Roofing Inc. Item 24 is the stop loss insurance. Item 25 is contract amendment for contract SD 2012-05 Old North Durham Park Infrastructure Improvements. Item 26 is the American Tobacco Trail contract amendment for additional construction administration. Item 27 is the contract between the City of Durham and Creative Recycling Systems of North Carolina LLC for processing and marketing electronic materials. Item 28 is agreement between the City of Durham and Duke University for the Bull City Connector. Items 31 through 35 are items that can be found on the general business agenda and the public hearings. And item 39 is an item that can be found on the general business agenda. I entertain a motion for approval of consent agenda items. So moved, Mr. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, we'll move to the general business agenda, item 39. A resolution expanding Medicaid. Uh, the items in property moved in second. We have four persons that would like to speak, and I saw the city managers. Do you have a comment? You want to no. Okay. Uh, if I, as I call your name, can you proceed to the podium to my right? 
and uh, you have two minutes on each one of these items. Dr. Gary Greenberg, Dr. Greenberg present. This is Howard Ellison. Ison, okay. Mohan Shuk. That's why it's He's coming, okay, good. <laughs> and pronounce your name when you get here, please. I apologize for that. I couldn't read it. And Dr. Webb, entry monumentous. It's those doctors' handwriting. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, that was, okay. The Dell Webb Project is, okay, that's a public hearing item, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Well, I'm Dr. Gary Greenberg, a uh, resident here in Durham, and uh, my job is as a charity care provider at a free clinic that happens to be in Wake County, and I used to commute there from Durham when I worked at Duke for many years. Uh, now I'm there every day, but I see patients who are exclusively those who are adults uninsured who would have been advantaged by the federal program to provide them coverage through Medicaid and its expansion that would begin in January. and found the decision by the General Assembly and the State Senate um, appalling and unwise, uh, almost hostile to the needs of our community, both as the providers who want the opportunity to provide comprehensive and ongoing care, and those who require help to get care and are now falling on charities and unpaid care that they receive at the institutions that um, host them through emergency visits and devastating episodes of crisis. The opportunity did not arise to make a reasoned argument in front of the legislature, and it was passed in a hurry and a flurry uh, that many of us in this room today witnessed from the gallery and were prohibited even from clapping um, <clears throat> when uh, more wise points were made on the other side of this topic. Uh, our hope is that through the wisdom of the city council and other local groups, recognizing the need for Medicaid expansion to support the clinical community and the needy adults who would otherwise go uncared for and, um, and ignored, that we can pass this resolution and try to get some attention from the public that would alter the perception of the legislatures, uh, legislators in Raleigh. So I appreciate your taking this on your agenda. It's a a thoughtful resolution and it covers many of the necessary points and I hope that you'll endorse it. Thanks very much. My name is Howard Eisenson. I'm a family physician privileged to be practicing in Durham for 34 years. I currently work as the medical director at Lincoln Community Health Center and I applaud your interest in uh, exploring this resolution. Um, I think that uh, we health professionals are, are not used to going to uh, legislatures and city council chambers and lobbying and this sort of thing. It's really not part of our routine activity, but this, this whole business of uh, uh, implementing the Affordable Care Act or, or failing to implement a central element of it in North Carolina has gotten us out in some numbers. There were 40 or 50 of us outside for a press conference earlier and a bunch of us still here. And I think uh, we do the public a disservice if we don't make it very clear to all of you that it is an injustice not to expand Medicaid for the people of North Carolina. 500 of our most vulnerable citizens are relying upon us, the medical profession, and, and, uh, and also you in government to do the right thing by them, and we must. I thought it was interesting. I, I appreciated that you uh, recited the pledge at the start of the meeting. I didn't know that that's still done. But uh, most of us learned the Pledge of Allegiance by heart when we were kids. And when we were children, um, it didn't have to mean much. We just learned to mouth the words. But really, it does now need to mean something. It does need to mean something. And uh, I want to just briefly quote the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who stated that of all the forms of inequality, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. And we just pledged allegiance uh, to a, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So please stand on the side of justice and encourage legislative bodies, um, governmental bodies across the state to join with you 
because you will be on the side of right and we should do no less. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Mohan Shalakari. I'm a family physician in uh, Durham, North Carolina. I've been here about 20 years practicing. And uh, I, I certainly uh, applaud um, uh, this body to take the time to pass this uh, resolution to urge the North Carolina, North Carolina legislature and the governor to come to their census. And uh, as uh, my colleagues just pointed out, uh, Dr. Howard Eisenson, Dr. Eisenberg, have eloquently stated that this is completely unjust for them not to expand Medicaid. I was just reading, I think yesterday, the, the United Nations, the basic precept in there is for everybody on this, in this world to have, uh, the, to have uh, some very basic uh, things, food, shelter, and adequate medical care. And this is from the United Nations. And uh, so, uh, I don't know what's going on with the, the Republican legislature and the, and, the, uh, and the governor. Well, one thing I want to point out is do not lose heart because McCrory, I think, uh, is saying half-truths. And uh, here's what I mean. So when he pointed out that Medicaid is broken, that's why he does not want to expand, it is a half-truth. I call it a McCrorism. And, um, and what it is is he said Medicaid ran a budget deficit of a billion dollars, roughly which is a large amount, and uh, he says, well, uh, there are a few other administrative uh, stuff that was going on, but any large body like that will have some inefficiencies. But what he forgot, or what he misled us in saying is, the amount of the uh, budget that was overrun was exactly the amount that the Republican legislature reduced the previous year. So what's the surprise? Uh, they didn't know how to reduce the, the um, Medicaid uh, uh, options and the population did not decrease. So it was a half-truth. And uh, so that, that we should not ignore. I and mean, We should push this forward and point that out. The Medicaid system is not broken, as several other folks have pointed out. North Carolina's Medicaid system has actually had um, uh, several uh, uh, awards for uh, reducing the rate of increase of health healthcare expenditures, and other states have actually looked at our Medicaid system to see how we're doing it. Thank you very much, and uh, you're welcome. <coughs> I, I, I think I think it might be appropriate to at least read the resolution that uh, we are being asked to vote on. Uh, it's a resolution expanding Medicaid. Whereas Durham prides itself on being the city of medicine, whereas there are an estimated 18% of Durham County residents who are uninsured, whereas the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act provides federal funding for states to expand Medicaid to all citizens, earning less than 138% of the federal poverty level, and whereas this Medicaid expansion will extend insurance coverage to more than 500,000 North Carolinians and save the state approximately $65 million over 10 years, whereas the Durham City Council thinks all residents should have access to quality, affordable health coverage. Therefore, be it resolved that, one, the City Council urges the North Carolina General Assembly and the governor to accept federal funds to expand Medicaid in North Carolina, and two, this resolution shall be effective on and after this passage and shall be shared with the members of the Durham's General Assembly delegation. That's the resolution. We've had a motion and a second. Uh, for the discussion, recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I really appreciate the folks that turned out to support this. Uh, we have, if we look out here in our audience, we have community health leadership in our community sitting out here, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thank you all so much for bringing this to us so that we can, that we can take this step. I also want to say it would be awfully hard for me to vote against this, Mr. Mayor, even if I was against it, which I'm not. I'm adamantly in favor of it. My, the doctor that delivered my oldest son, Abe, is out here in favor of it. Uh, my doctor is here, Dr. Chili Curry. Dr. Chili Curry, my shoulder's killing me. Maybe we could talk afterward. Uh, and uh, 
No, but seriously, it is an incredibly important issue, and uh, I'm really grateful that you all brought this to us. And I'd like to also thank the young man, Anthony Ross, who uh, originated this. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You know, further comments and discussion. Recognize Councilman Brown. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to echo what my colleague <clears throat> Steve Scholl said, uh, except it's my knee, not my shoulder. But, um, and one correction, and for the uh, the first speaker, I think you used Eisenberg, Doctor. I really want to thank all of you for coming. We're glad to see you getting involved uh, at this crucial issue. Uh, you said what the General Assembly has done is almost hostile. I would suggest that it is exceedingly hostile uh, to all the citizens of this state. Thank you. Thank you. No, we, the motion has been second with discussion. No further discussion. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You can still stay for the rest of the meeting if you like, too. Right. No, seriously, I, I know you've got business to do, so we will excuse you if you need to leave. Uh, we're next moving to the public hearings on the general business agenda. Item 31 is street name, street renaming, SN 13000001 Ardmore Drive. Good evening, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Um, case SN, uh, before I begin the quick, quick inter introduction to this case, I can certify for the record that the cases before you tonight that are public hearing items have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law, and uh, we have affidavits on effect, to that effect on file with the Planning Department. Uh, the item before you now, case SN 13001, is a request to permanently rename approximately 150 feet of the current Ardmore Drive to the uh, new name of Morningside Drive. What this renaming would accomplish is to allow for a consistent street name uh, to be applied to a segment uh, of roadway that would connect the existing Woodcroft subdivision to a new section of the Chamberlain subdivision. A public meeting on this request was held on May 14, 2013 to receive public comment on this proposed renaming and no comments were received. Um, following review by city staff, U.S. Postal Service, and other outside review agencies, no potentially negative impacts to this proposal were identified. And as such, staff recommends approval of the street renaming. And we'll be happy to take any questions, and thank you. This is a public hearing. Would I ask if there are questions about the staff? No questions of the staff. Uh, is anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the audience asked to speak. I would require the public hearing to be closed. Matter of fact, before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, next item, item 32, conference plan amendment. Rustica Oaks Subdivision A13000003. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, case A13003, Rustica Oaks Plan Amendment. The applicant is Rustica Oaks LLC. They're proposing to amend uh, the future land use map from its current designation of a 0.66 acre parcel located at 1819 Rustica Drive, which is just uh, east of South Austin Avenue and north of Rustica Drive, from its current designation of uh, low density residential to low medium density residential. Uh, the purpose of the proposed plan amendment would be to allow a supportable zoning map change request that would um, allow the subdivision of the existing pro property into multiple lots. And uh, this request uh, would result in uh, is compatible with the existing land use pattern, the designated future land use uh, designation for the area, and other criteria uh, identified in the Unified Development Ordinance. The uh, Planning Commission recommended approval of this item at its May 14th meeting by a vote of 11 to 0, and staff recommends approval. I'll be happy to take any questions. Well, you've heard the staff report. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone on the council that has questions of the staff? Uh, is anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item, either for or against? Item 32, you, you want to speak on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to add a little levity and bipartisanship to the, to the moment here. Before. 
before we get too serious tonight about all these other serious issues, I will be doing a parody satire of Rustica Oak's uh, agenda item tonight for your entertainment for the next two minutes and 45 seconds. I will be in character and it will be sung by my cousin Sal Manella. Okay, Salvatore Manella, better known as Sal Manella. So I'm supporting this agenda item. We'll do this my way. I'll slam the gavel. Let's cut some driveway. Now lay that gavel, gravel. Let's cut the greeting and start the meeting. This land was made, but it ain't free. You'll have consultants. We'll bring the lawyer. You want brick sidewalks? We want a foyer. You pour the concrete. We'll order pizza burned. This meeting may now be adjourned. This land is your land, east of South Alston. There's room for hiking, and you can dance to Charleston. Let's subdivide it, then try to hide it. That way, the Mexicans won't find it. Just make the entrance a gated community. Remember, trespassers have full immunity. Add a nice tall fence, and the area grows more dense. This land was made, but it ain't free. We called the city, spoke to Steve Medlin. Cause excavators had commenced to meddling. We caught them fracking near the fresh water well. They flipped us off and said, go to Bell. Bell is the mayor, a saber to slayer. But you need his blessing and it takes a prayer from Austin Avenue to Miami Boulevard. Let's have some cheaper, smaller yards. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Political satire. Gotcha. Not meant to be serious or uh, attacking I, I anybody. Just want to leave time for someone Thank else. You. Recognize, this is on an amendment now, this isn't a zoning piece. Okay, recognize Councilman Shule. John, appreciate your satire and always enjoy them, but I think we need to be mindful of uh, remarks against ethnic groups and you know, to talk about Mexicans in that way, I just wanna say I, I really feel like it's very inappropriate and uh, I know you meant it as a joke, but it doesn't come across as a joke. You know, Councilman Sewell, I want to apologize again. If I did, I did run it by someone. I'm not going to name any names, but I had ran it across a couple people first, and it was taken as the way it was intended, which was ethno uh, ethnocentric humor. It was not intended. I have, uh, by the way, let me just say this. I sit on a Hispanic community outreach board. I have friends that are Hispanic. And I've had friends that are Hispanic for my entire life, since sixth grade. So I just want to make that clear. It was only intended as a joke. I know that it was not politically correct humor, but that's why I tried to preface it as satire. And I, I do apologize if I did offend anybody here. That's what I do. I do satire. I do it in cafes and, and bars and stuff like that. So if there's any other comments, I'd be glad to take them. Accept your comments as part of public hearing for the record, apology included. Anyone else that wants to speak on this item? If not, let the record reflect no one else has to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote and close the vote? It passes six to zero. Item 33 is a zoning map change for Rustica Oaks subdivision Z13000006. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Pat Young again with the planning department. Um, this is the companion zoning case to the comprehensive plan map amendment case you just heard and approved. Um, the request is to change the subject parcel, which was described in the last case, from current zoning of rural residential, or RR, to res residential suburban 8, or RS8. Um, there's no development plan associated with this request. If this request is approved, what it would allow is the subdivision of the current parcel into approximately three residential building lots. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval at their May 14th meeting by a vote of 11 to 0 and staff finds the request consistent with the ordinance and policy standards adopted by council and uh, therefore we find it consistent with those and recommend approval. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing. I would ask other questions by the staff, other staff by the council. Uh, is anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item, this being a public hearing? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on this item. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter's back before the council. It's been properly moved. Second, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? 
close the vote? It passes six to zero. Move to item 34, conference of plan amendment, Dell Webb Entry Monuments, A12000009. Thank you again, Pat Young with the Planning Department, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Case A12009, Dell Webb Entry Monuments Plan Amendment. The applicant is Horvath Associates and they're requesting uh, to amend the future land use map of the comprehensive plan from its current designation of low density residential to institutional in three locations, cumulative of 2.67 acres along the perimeter of the uh, approved Del Webb Carolina Arbor, Arbors residential neighborhood. The requested land use map change would allow for a companion zoning map case that would allow the construction of entryway monuments into the project. Uh, the scale and scope of the proposed monuments are not allowable within the residential district, so this is why the action is, is necessary. Um, in reviewing this application, staff determined that there are circumstances to warrant the amending of the future land use map. Uh, the request is consistent with the criteria to amend the land use map and, uh, and consistent with other policies in the comprehensive plan and we're therefore recommending approval. The Planning Commission recommended approval at its uh, May 14th meeting by a vote of 11 to 0. Be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing. Uh, the public hearing is open. I would ask by the council if you have any questions of staff. Uh, is anyone in the public who wants to speak? Uh, Ron, you had signed up to speak. Any questions of the applicant? If not, recognize no one else has to speak. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Item 35 is zoning map change, Dell Webb Entry Monuments, Z12000020. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young again with the planning department. Um, this case, Z12000020, is the companion zoning case to the conference of plan case you just heard. It would um, rezone the subject property 2.67 acres from its current designation of PDR 3.70 to office institutional with a development plan or OID. Uh, what this would allow is a, um, um, a maximum of approximately 80 square foot of signage at these locations. Uh, no building or other uses will be permitted with this request. Uh, the uh, plan department has reviewed this, finds it consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies and the unified development ordinance. Uh, and planning commission recommended approval of this by a vote of 11 to zero at its May 14th meeting. Be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing item. Uh, the public hearing is open. Recognize Councilman Mock. Yeah, I, I had just one question. Um, the site plan has been submitted as a development plan. Is that correct? Yes. Any other questions? Is that it? Was that, was that it? Is there anyone in the public who wants to speak on this item again? Ron Harvard has signed up. Uh, any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, is anyone else in the public that would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else in the public asked to speak on this item. I'll declare the public hearing closed. Matter of fact, for council. It has been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, you're welcome. Before we adjourn, uh, we have scheduled a special meeting uh, Thursday. Uh, it was scheduled to begin at 11 o'clock for the purpose of uh, continuing the evaluations. Uh, we've done the present the evaluations of the appraisals to the city manager, the city attorney, and the city clerk. Uh, the city manager will not be here, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be here. It depends on uh, whether or not I go to Charlotte. But I would suggest that we have the meeting at 11.30, closer to 12. Still set up for 11 o'clock. I'll, I'll leave that on there. But if we can do it, people come to about 11:30, uh, and then we will do the evaluation, or the follow-up evaluation with the city manager at the Thursday of our next work session, which is whatever date that turns, 22nd. 22nd. And I know one of our members will not be here at that, but he's consented for us to, to go ahead without him. Uh, any other items to come before the council? Any other comments? Recognize. I was, sure. I was wondering if it seems to me we have a family here with a young man who maybe was studying city government. I expect he found it pretty boring tonight, but I just wanted to assure him it's not always as boring. Sometimes we even debate. Thanks for being here. 
Any other comments? If not, the meeting's adjourned at 7.46 p.m. Thank you.